Knife crime is rising at a much steeper rate in the home counties and rural provinces than in London, police figures show, amid signs that the growing use of blades is spreading from the cities to the shires. Official statistics show a 45% average increase in knife-related offences in 34 English and Welsh counties since 2010, compared with an 11% rise in the capital. In the home counties, crime rise has risen by an average of 44.8% over the past eight years. Kent recorded the biggest increase of such crimes in England and Wales, up 150% since April 2010. Police chiefs and experts said the figures were partly fueled by gangs targeting new customers in rural areas known as the counterlines phenomenon, which they said was causing an overspill in criminality from the cities to the provinces. I'm going to talk about this today, and I'm going to be joined by a council barrister, uh, Mr. Stephen Atkinson here, who has a modern approach to independent practice with over 20 years experience at the Bar of England and Wales. Stephen has also been on with me on the show at the Solution Oriented Summit, talking about knife crime. And again, he's coming from a different angle, which we don't hear about a lot. He's coming from the angle of what happens in the courtroom after the crime what happens to the perpetrators. Sometimes we more hear about the victims. We see the marches on the street, the victims, the mothers. But with Steve, we're going to hear about the perpetrators, what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Silburn Show. Victoria Mutual invites members, Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica to its Let's Talk community meeting hosted by the President and CEO of the Victoria Mutual Group, Courtney Campbell. Also in attendance will be representatives from the National Land Agency, Guardian Group, Moorland Development Limited, Candor Property Services and Red Roof Property Services. Come join the conversation and let's talk. Monday, June 24th, North London Tottenham, Tottenham Town Hall, N15 4RY. Wednesday, June 26th, at the H Suite, Centennial Centre, B15 0AA. Friday, June 28th, South London Brixton, Lambeth Town Hall, SW2 1RW. Registration starts at 6.30pm. Admission free. Hey, Stephen, welcome good. again. Good to see you, Sylvan. Awesome. Good to see you again. Not in court. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's nice on the weekend, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. Um, Stephen, well, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And, um, you know, we have been around, we have been talking about the whole issue about knife crime. Not just talking about it, but looking at solutions. Mm. And one of the things that I said is that every time I film, I want to keep that on the table. And why? Because for years, it rises, head, nothing happens, and nothing, and then that's the end of it. And then something happens, and we start talking about it. But I said I want to keep a presence on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Stephen, um, the, the few weeks ago, as I said, knife crime seems not to be going down amidst all the various initiatives. Um, I've, I've got something here that said that... Um, and I'm going to look. I'm going to look for it right here. Knife crime rises in 2018. 39,818 knife crime offences in the 12 months ending September 2018. Two thirds increase from the low point in the year ending March 2014, when there were 23,945 offences, and is the highest number since comparable data was compiled. What's going on? I w wish I knew the answer. Mm. I mean, yeah. certainly from, from the figures I've read, there's been a 6% a increase yeah. in the number of offences involving knives and instruments uh, with a sharp point. 12% yes. increase <coughs> in offences of murder and manslaughter. Yes. So one has to ask, are we making any progress? Because yeah. it doesn't seem as if a day goes by when we don't read about another victim of mm. knife crime, not only in London, but uh, in places like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool. Uh, and people are, are right to ask, what mm. is going on? Mm. Why are we not dealing with this? Are we dealing with this? Are we stopping it? If we're not stopping it, how do we stop it? Yeah. 
Um, and I'm the first to admit that perhaps we won't eradicate it fully. Mm. Knife crime has always been there, but not uh, at this level, not with this number of young people losing their lives across yes. the country. And so something has to be done and we have to keep up uh, the momentum. We have to keep talking about it and searching for solutions yes. to deal with it. Yes. And also one of the things um, which with yourself and what you do as a barrister, you are seeing the other side. You are seeing the side which we don't normally hear of. Yes. And of recent days, when you start to talk about it, people are opening up and mothers, fathers, people are seeing what happens in the courtroom. Um, tell us about your role in the scheme of things as a barrister, your oversight um, publicly, you know. Well, ordinarily, people might say, well, why is he talking about it? He's a defense barrister who yeah. defends people charged with murder and manslaughter. Surely he's shooting himself in the foot because that's how he earns his living. Yes. But for me, it's more than that because as a father with two young sons, um, every day when I read the news or when I'm involved in these cases, there is an emotional attachment which I can't seem to shake yes. because I think when I look at the victims, um, graphic photos of a young man lying on a mortuary slab, and I'm asking myself the question, well, that could be my son. Mm. Uh, and even though we can't eradicate it fully, there has to be uh, some of us who are motivated to try and stop or reduce the number of young people being murdered. Yes. And so, although I'm involved from a mentoring perspective with young men and young women, uh, I like to try and educate people from what happens within the courtroom, because mm. often people are oblivious about what happens in a criminal trial where a young person is charged with murder or manslaughter. It's the most serious criminal offence mm. on the calendar and often involving people who haven't even reached the age of 20. Yes. And for them to understand the dynamics of what happens in a courtroom, the legal complexities, um, it's important that they know because mm. if that acts as a deterrent, then mm. I'm ready to push that message out because being involved in these court cases regularly, I see the issues, the fear of the victims, the families, mm. um, the, the inability to understand legal concepts. Mm. And so for me, it's important that they understand when you decide to use that knife, when yes. someone dies and you're charged, this is what's waiting for you. And yes. it's so important that yeah. even the judges who are there to pass the sentences that we all hear about, mm. they're even alarmed, saying, mm. why are this number of young people coming through our courts? Even yes. we want to stop it. Stephen, um, that is interesting what you just said a while ago, because today on the news, on my way, the news reported that the hospital is very concerned that their waiting list is increasing because as a result of these crime with stabbings, the victims are coming there displacing normal bookings. Mm. The police are also complaining, not complaining, no, they're just relating the fact that as a result of these crimes, they have to be stationed there to deal with reprisals. Mm. Now, I've never heard that bit before, but it's like it is a groundswell. It is, is the court system, put it this way, the court is there all the while. What is a message the court is actually uh, filtering down to say, let's get these things done. So like, is, is sentencing going to be increased or whatever like that? Is, is there some sort of um, way to stop it that the, the court is doing? Yeah. Well, I mean, people, there's a misconception because don't forget, judges can only pass the sentences yes. that um, government, parliament dictate yes. um, should be passed. So that they, they can't just pass sentences that they feel are appropriate. Yeah. So they're operating within a, a statutory framework. Yes, yes. Um, so the issue is people say, oh, there should be longer sentences. But for, for my mind, if, if a young man or a young woman is convicted of murder and they get the mandatory life sentence and they are asked or told rather that they will serve a minimum of 25 or 30 years, yeah. that's a very long time. Yes. There are not that many prisoners um, or those convicted in the UK who are what we call full life term um, prisoners. There aren't yes. that many as yes. compared to America, for example. Mm. Um, and we could start saying, well, you will do a whole life term for people convicted. But to me, for me, that, that's not the answer. Yeah. Those sentences are long sentences. And that's part of the reason why I try and educate people. Because when you're talking about 
doing a three-year sentence, five-year sentence, you think mm. you can do that. Yeah. But when we start talking about double figures, 20 years, 30 mm. years, and we're not talking of what people talk on the street of doing half the sentence, you're doing the whole term. Yes. And even when you do 20, 30 years, it's not automatically yes. your release will come. Mm -hmm. When people start understanding that concept of sentencing, it might just start to act as a proper deterrent. But they will only understand that when they understand what happens in the courtroom. Yes. And the Russian roulette that is a criminal trial when you're a young person charged mm. with murder. Mm. Because you're asked, or you are asking 12 people who you've never met, mm. who read the news every day about knife crime, they have a perception about young people, the way they dress, the, the way the music they listen to, the language they use. Yes. And they have to park that and listen to the evidence in a case where someone is implicated for murder yes. or manslaughter. You have to understand that the prosecution in these cases have the full weight of the prosecuting authority, the mm. CPS. Yes. So the police have done their investigation thoroughly most of the time, mm. which means looking at mobile telephone evidence, forensics, yes. um, things that people don't think about. Mm. And then you have to be under, in a position where you understand what is happening in the courtroom, the yes. legal concepts yes. of bad yeah. character evidence. Mm. So if you have a criminal conviction where you've carried a knife before, chances are that evidence will go before the jury and they can form an inference yes, yes. that you're someone who carries knives and therefore you use the knife on this occasion. Mm. There are so many things that young people who enter the court system do not understand. And when mm. you're on trial, as a young person at the most most imposing court within the land, which is the Old Bailey, yes. uh, even advocates are intimidated, mm. let alone a 15 or 16 year old young man who perhaps has not gone through the education system properly to even understand diction, dialogue, yes. what's happening in the courtroom. Yes, yes. yes. Um, now the court makes allowances for this, but you're still on trial for murder. Yeah. It's very interesting what you're saying, and um, as I said earlier in my, in my opening, it's an area which is not normally seen or known. No. Give us, uh, and for some young person you may be watching, mm. what, what, what are some of the emotional um, things which happens in the courtroom, in that setting? Um, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen actually uh, defend most of most time perpetrators, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, defense counsel. So therefore, um, you know, a mother might be listening now, you know, Stephen defends um, the person that um, did the killing. Now, I want to break it down for yourself personally. What is it like defending someone, and I'm not saying it when it's overwhelming evidence, you know, how do you compartmentalize, you know, black man, father, and seeing this man before, and yet you have to... Defending. Well, one has to always be professional. That's yes. the first thing. But I'm human. Yes. And I'm a black man. Yes. And I'm a father of two young black boys. Mm. And so perhaps unlike many of my colleagues, I have an insight and perhaps feel it a little bit more. Yes. Because there I am in the courtroom, often uh, one of um, very few black barristers involved in the case. Yes. Um, mm. And I sit there in the courtroom looking around and I look at the dock which has the black young black defendants in mm. and I look at the jury and then I look at the public gallery which has mm. some family members and then sometimes within the well of the court inside the court are the victims mm. um, or, or the victims parents yes and all of those emotions are going around in my head but I'm a professional first and foremost yes but I recognize when I see these young men often downstairs in the cells mm. I can smell the fear, I can see mm. the fear, because all the bravado that took place out on the street yes. when these things happened has gone. Wow. Uh, I was involved in a case recently and, and, and I was talking to the person I represented and I said to him of his co-defendant, I said, mm. is he okay? He said, he's very, very scared. Mm. He said he's about to burst into tears because he's so scared, mm. because this is real. Yes. It's not yeah. a film, it's not a drama, <clears throat> it's real. Yeah. And so for me, um, it's so important and I get very emotional when I think about it because these are young boys who haven't mm. even lived. Some of them haven't even left 
the UK. They've never yes. been on a holiday. Mm. And here they are, travelling to court from various prisons around London, some as far as Kent, yes. in a prison van, which is a small cubicle. Mm. That claustrophobic feeling, yes. arriving at court, sometimes tired because you had to wake up at five o'clock to be mm. brought to court, sometimes without a shower, mm. sometimes without breakfast, mm. and you have to sit the full court day listening to the evidence. Mm. And in between the time when you're not in court, you're kept in a cell, a holding cell at the court. Yes. All of these things people are oblivious to till they're actually involved in mm. it. And that's what goes on. Yeah. Is it something that, um, because what, what is seen is that the, the deterrent factor, because sometimes um, what, what is out there on the street sometimes is that they come out, if anything, mm. and it's like they, are, they want to go back in. It, mm. it is like a, a notch mm. on their belt, it mm. has been said at times. Mm. Is, once they go in, th is it that they become a bit more hardened, so it is a normal thing? Be or before they go in, mm. Scared. Mm -hmm. But once they're in, now they're hardened and then it's become a, a normal... Yeah. Well, we all have heard of the term institutionalised. Yes, yes, now, yes. You do become hardened because sometimes in certain establishments, such as Feltham, yeah. you have to be tough to survive with yes. what goes on in there. Yes. But when you have the concept of you'll be out after two or three years, mm -hmm. that's fine. But when you're talking about doing 20 or 30 years in a Category A prison, yes. that's a different concept. Yes. Because you're not coming out anytime soon. You're going in as a young man, 18, 19, mm. and coming out as a man who's middle-aged yes. in a world, perhaps in the future, you will not recognise. Yes, yes. That's a long time. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, very interesting point to take a break now because I'm going to come back after and talk about the father. One time Stephen mentioned about the fathers. I'm going to touch on that and look at some solution and also about the legal profession and getting more persons in there as well. Thank you. Victoria Mutual invites members, Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica to its Let's Talk community meeting hosted by the President and CEO of the Victoria Mutual Group, Courtney Campbell. Also in attendance will be representatives from the National Land Agency, Guardian Group, Moreland Development Limited, Candor Property Services and Red Roof Property Services Come join the conversation and let's talk. Monday, June 24th, North London Tottenham, Tottenham Town Hall, N15 4RY. Wednesday, June 26th, at the H Suite, Centennial Centre, B15 0AA. Friday, June 28th, South London Brixton, Lambeth Town Hall, SW2 1RW. Registration starts at 6.30pm. Admission free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. And while I'm talking about welcome back to the show, there have been some new developments on the Silburn show as well because uh, all shows now will have a podcast. The website is being revamped and being tweaked and will be coming out soon. So make sure, so while you're washing your dishes, driving or so, you can actually listen to the podcast on the Silburn show on the website, which is coming up soon. Well, I've got Stephen Akinson here, counsel, Barrister Defence Council, and we're talking about um, his role and what he does in the courtroom. And if you remember what we're talking about is um, what it is like, you know, seeing um, young boys, the perpetrators and the process, something which parents need to know, young boys need to know. But I want to ask something about deterrent and one of the solutions. Stephen, tell us about, you, you had a story one time when you, when you said to the judge, look up there, yeah. where are the fathers? Yeah. Start that, explain that, that bit for me. It has been powerful a couple of times you have said. I want you to sort of elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah. and I remember the case well. Yeah. Um, it was a case at Croydon Crown Court and a young man was being sentenced. Yes. And I was so incensed that every time I looked at the public gallery, it was just packed full of women. Mm. And on the day of sentence, I had the audacity, some might say, but the judge thanked me for saying it because mm. she couldn't say it. Mm. And I said to the judge, look at the public gallery. Mm. Where are the men? Where are the fathers of these boys who mm. were charged, who are now about to receive a sentence? Mm. And in numerous cases that I have defended in, I always look to see who has represented the family for these mm. young men. And most cases, not every case, but mm. most cases, 
no father is present. Mm. And that to me is powerful. Yeah. And there is something that is indicative of the fact that many of these young boys do not have their biological father or any man present in their lives. Yeah. Because without that guidance that comes from birth as a father, guiding mm. your child, giving them the rights and the yeah. wrongs, <clears throat> mm. they will find their moral compass elsewhere. Yes. Usually in the gangs, on the streets. And that's why we, the importance of all these different groups who are in existence or are now cropping up. Yes, yes. 56 black 56 men, black men yes. and, and others. It's important work. Yes. Because thus far, the black man has been silent or has been yes. viewed as not being interested. And that's not always the case. There yes. are many young black boys growing up with fathers in a nuclear family with present, who are yeah. present. But there are many who are not. And even if their natural fathers have no interest or are not around for whatever mm. reason, it's incumbent on us as black men, professional black men, working black men, to give these young men a perspective mm. of what it means to mm. be a man, yes. not what the world tells you. And, 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 and it's very important what you said right there about the, the role of other men being a man in those children's lives. Uh, there's something I spoke about recently about um, the Godfather, that, that is his video about mm. being the Godfather. Mm. Um, of course, we know within the Caribbean community and with everybody, um, a child is born, you know, you go to church, you've got a Christian, you've got a Godfather, you've got a Godmother. Mm. Um, the Godfather tends to be a person that kicks in whenever the father is not around mm. or they are gone. Mm. And I believe that it's a principle and the Mafia uses it a lot, you know, mm. without promoting the Mafia business. But it's so important now that men need to somehow accept responsibility or feel responsible for the young black boys. Mm. When I say young black boys, somebody will say, well, it's not just black boys doing knife crime, Silbert. I deviate briefly right there and say to you now, Stephen, in court, in whole belly, uh, one of the intimidating court that deal knife crime, what is the percentage of perpetrators that come through the court? The one of the issues that we have to confront is reality. Yes. And I will tell you, in the n numerous murder cases I have done, many cases I've done, 90% of them are young black males mm. under the age of 20. Fact. Mm. Right. Okay. I just wanted Stephen to say that and let that one land. Because it is so important, it's very crucial that as men, you know, the other day I was, I think it was in McDonald's or whatever, and I, there was some few young boys there talking and stuff like that. And I went up to them and said, how are you? Shake their hands, you know? Just that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their situation is like, but mm -hmm. I think somehow we have got to somewhat um, take responsibility mm -hmm. as much, Stephen, mm -hmm. um, in, in, in regards to this. And w what's your thought about that? We do need to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think I shared with you that the other evening, Mm. I got home and I was just watching Barbershop 3. Yes, yes. And it was such a powerful movie. I'd seen it many times and I love the message. But it tells the story effectively of the community getting involved. Mm. Mm. The men getting involved. Not just for your child. Look, my sons are fine mm. in the sense that I keep them away from all of this as mm. best I can. And they're privileged to have me and, and a mother and a nuclear family and all the rest that goes with yes. it. But it's incumbent on me Mm -hmm. as a black man, as a father who sees children who are not so lucky yeah. to have some input, to try and do something, to deter. Mm. I can't deter all of them, but of if course. it's one or two, then I feel like I've done something. Mm -hmm. But to just sit there every day and read the news and to say, what a shame, what a pity, what are we going to do? Mm. That's not good enough. Yeah. And so we have to come together and see what we can do as a community, as a community of men, as a community yeah. of black men yes. who are interested in and concerned about the number of young black men who are being incarcerated or killing each other. Mm. For what? Yes, yes, for what? And that's so crucial, for what? It makes you start to wonder sometimes if um, the essence of understanding one's identity mm. is profound in our lives, in their lives, because when you understand about the historical past and the atrocities, mm. you realize that it's so important to be your brother's keeper. I saw some ladies one time in the States on a bus pulling out the bus driver because of something with the child or whatever like that. Mm. And the ladies beating up the bus driver with yes, another black. I and I said, I was laughing, with, I wasn't laughing, but someone laughed when I said it. 
what should happen in a situation like that is for there to be a, a moment of transformers, mm. a, a transformation moment whereby click, click, transform. Hey, she's a sister. Mm. No, no, we can't do this. There need to be like that, that man who was walking, saw these black boys about to fight, mm. and he said, you, 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 stop. You remember you got, you went viral. Mm. Mm. You, you, you are going to be laughing. You're going to mm. post that. You're laughing. They don't mean you good. Stop, 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 stop. Mm. That's what needs to happen. Of course, Stephen, it may create, um, you may have to be um, a martyr for the cause. <laughs> mm. Yes. You know, somebody yeah. might have to be a martyr for the cause, yes. you know. Yes. And, and I think that is so crucial. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a show which is going to be giving all solution, but we are just keeping a presence on this particular issue. And one of the key ones we are looking at now is the level of the fatherhood, fathers playing their fundamental role. Mm. Black men playing their fundamental role. Kudos to 56 black men. I've seen the work that they're doing. Everyone doing their bit. Mm. Isn't Stephen? Yeah. When we had the yeah. solution or in the yeah. summit, mm. it's saying, not everyone has the ultimate solution, but everyone has a part, is a part of the answer. The most important job yeah. you will do, and I tell people, oh, yeah. oh, they say, oh, you're a barrister. And all. I said, listen, forget all that. Yeah. The most important job that I will ever have until I shut my eyes yeah. is raising my two boys and yes. being a father. That's the most important job. Yes. And when you have that as a mindset, yes. which is what we all need to have, then I think things will improve. Yes, yes there are financial strains <clears throat> and there are career aspirations, but if you have a child as a man, mm. your first primary role is to raise that child with the proper value. So when you leave, your legacy continues. Amen. And I totally agree, the legacy initiative. Thank you. Now, you mentioned about you are in the profession there, and I wanted to touch on this bit because You've been a barrister for 20 years, you know? To 25 now. To 25, okay, yeah. we, need to, we, need to, we need to get, we need to get great, great James Street to update you. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know, um, you have built a reputation as an approachable, conscientious, professional, with sensitive treatment of solicitors and clients, and uh, is regarded as passionate and a persuasive advocate. There can be no doubt that advice detail as it is and with great particularity, identifying documents and the nature of documents to be obtained under Mr. Akinsan's expertise and experience in the issue of proceeds of Crime Act proceedings. That was Lady Justice Makir, BDE. Um, your practice areas, criminal defense work, prosecution work on behalf of the Department of Social Security, military court martial, and many others, coroner's inquest, and notable cases, R versus Braybox, Luton Crown Court, R versus Ali, Manchester Crown Court, and the list goes on. Stephen, you mentioned that there's a lack of that representation in court of black men, yeah? Mm. Barristers. Mm. How, what is the message you are saying now to persons, young black men, black women, whatever, entering the legal profession um, as, you know, your ex exemplary career as an example, setting a template? Well, I mean, first of all, you have to be, I always say, you have to be in it to win it. So, yes. for example, mm. you, you have to have obviously achieved academically to even enter the profession because the bar is set very high. Yeah, that's so, why it's called a bar, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but once you're in it, um, you have to work hard, you have to persevere. Yes. You have to be diligent. And, you know, you'll take some knocks. It was very hard starting out for many of us. Yes. Um, and we're still comparatively few in number, but we yes. are present. Yes. And I think it's important for the youngsters mm. who do go through the court system, mm. um, even if we're not representing them, yes. that they see us. Yes. Because they'll think, wow, that person's achieved it, just yes. as the person who's yes. representing me, and yes. that person looks like me. Yes. Um, and that's why it's important, because mm. We have to be present, yes. as in other walks of life, whether it's nurses, mm. doctors, because that's the way you inspire. Yes, I yes. remember a young man uh, who I represented who said to me that after he put his troubles behind him, that he wanted to be a lawyer. Yes. And I said to him, well, nothing can stop you. You may have had some trouble now mm. as a young man, but that shouldn't stop you wanting to go and study yes. law. Yes. And if you're really interested and passionate, you will find your way through. Yes. So it's important to be visible. And it's important what you said right there, as, as we're in the same field as a solicitor advocate, when you go before the judge sometimes and you see different cases, based on your thinking and based on your, as they say in Jamaica sometimes, your brought up, your, your mm. cultural aspect, mm. you are able to sometimes bring another dimension to the thinking of how the, the court may be thinking based on 
because it's, mm. it's personal at the same yeah, time. Yeah. It's subjective. It's, the law remains the same, yeah. but a level of subjection. Yeah. So, so therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it, it is very important to get involved in legal paternity and to, of course, as Stephen set out, that we need to do this. Stephen, before we wrap up, mm. um, and ladies and gentlemen, I just need to point you to that we have had two solution-oriented forums in the past. One was on the 30th of June, 2018, where Stephen Atkinson was one of the panelists. And then at on the 5th of August 2018 at the Crystal Palace where there was a fun day with the basic school. Um, we had about eight different guests. Uh, Stephen also was one of the panelists. You can see it on the look on the the website, not the website yet, but on the YouTube channel. Stephen, before we wrap up, mm. any last word that you want to say on this particular topic? Uh, we want to share with mm. the people, if anything, young men, look it. You want to say, speak, you're speaking to someone and you want to send a message in that camera there, yeah. Well, I would say that yeah. from the moment you're born, there is an expectancy by those who have brought you into the world. And why should it end? Why should you be put in the ground at 15 or 16 years of mm. age before you've fulfilled your potential? You've never traveled. Mm. You never enjoyed the things that this world can offer. Why would you want to end it prematurely for short term gain? Better to build your foundation, look for opportunities so that you can lead what is really and truly properly a full life. Mm, fantastic. And I was going to ask you one more thing. What would be your mantra, your, your um, key word or your proverbs? It sounds like you just said that a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> but I, if, if I, there's a key word. What yeah, yeah, well, I have always had this saying, yes. and it actually comes off a record label yes. from my days back as a DJ on the Taboo record label. You DJ, label. yeah? Yeah. I used to rap as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, break but there used to be, on the, back of, <laughs> on the back of this album, particularly by the SOS band, funny yes. enough, one of my yeah. favorite groups, Taboo Records used to have a slogan, the earth has music for those who listen. Yeah. And as a young man, I always used to think, what does that mean? Yeah. But it really means that, look, with all the troubles and strifes that we have in this life, mm. if we choose to live it a certain way and walk a certain path, there is music. Yes. There is music. There is music. And that music shouldn't end before you've reached the age of 30. Wow. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard um, what Stephen has said, and you have heard the show, and you have watched it. And for those on podcast as well, you're listening. It is very important that we are aware of what is happening around us. There are many different sounds, many different voices. We've got a Brexit factor, we've got Prince Archie, or whatever. Everything is happening, but there's one thing which is so crucial and important, is that um, knife crime, um, what the statistics are saying, what the figures are saying, it is on the increase. Um, work has been done, lots of people are doing things, but somehow the figures are saying it is increasing. Now. We, we knock our heads, we go around tables, and yet at the same time, am I, am I correct, Stephen? It is increasing. So we've got to ask a question. What is it that we have not been doing? We've got to ask ourselves this question. What is it that we have always been doing, and somehow we are still doing it, and we're expecting different results? Because if we're expecting different results and doing the same thing, that's what they call madness. So we've got to now think, and I'm not giving the answer, I'm just giving a perspective here, that we've got to think now, how do I get out of the box? What can I do for my young son, my young daughter? We keep talking about son, but we, we, we hear about honey trap. Mm. We hear about young girls who are also playing the game, a part of the whole process. Mm. The community as well, which I always believe, and many people agree, but they need to actually own it. I always say sometimes it is good to demonstrate, it's good to march. But I've learned to understand of recent days that many of the perpetrators are also known. And I always say, why not march in front of the home of the known gangster, the known perpetrator? Why not be a martyr for the cause? Powerful words I'm saying. Somebody might say it's easy for you, Silver, to speak. But it's better to speak it. And as what Stephen says, and the, the quote, the music, repeat it for me, Stephen. Oh, the earth has music for those who listen. The earth has music for those who listen. Right? We don't want any more young man, black, white, whatever race, creed or tongue, to die. We don't want any more dreams to be in the grave. Many dreams are there. They say it's rich. That's what they say. Mm. The, the, the graveyards are rich with so many dreams. A gold mine. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show. 
And I'll, Stephen, I want to thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Silver. Pleasure. You know Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribe and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.